Hi, my name is James Powers. I'm an artist. I teach drawing classes here at Fresh Kills during the year out of a modified shipping container um, in the middle of Fresh Kills Park. Uh, today, I'm going to show you some short uh, exercises and, and one long exercise drawing the landscape uh, that you can practice at home, wherever you may be. Okay, first exercise I want to do today is just a quick line drawing exercise. You take a piece of charcoal, if you don't have charcoal, you can take a pencil, pen, whatever you have. And uh, I like to work from the largest sheet of paper that I can find. And I use this as a way to get used to the space, to use the landscape, start to look around and figure out how I'm going to lay out my final piece. And I usually try and spend no more than 30 seconds on these short studies. So I'm just going to use the, the, the end of the charcoal just to draw the contours of the landscape and what I see. Grasses here in the foreground. Trees back here. Manhattan over here. The Gothel's Bridge over here. Jersey over there. All right. Okay, so this next exercise, I want to think about the light, where the light's coming from, where the shadows are, and I'm going to completely ignore outlines. I'm just going to look out here, and I'm going to study what's bright, what's medium bright, and what's dark. It's kind of hard today because it's a very bright day overall, but there's definitely areas where which are dark. You can see the foot of the kind of forest over there, the, one of the wetlands, you know, the base of the trees. And for this exercise, I'll take the charcoal and I'll break it in half. This way I can use the side of the charcoal This exercise is harder because it's, it doesn't become representational immediately. You're kind of stuck in sort of an uncomfortable position. But you have to get used to that when you're drawing outside. So it doesn't look like much, but it helps me understand where the light's coming from. And to make to work on my final composition, I can start to get a sense of where I really need to, like, what I need to include, what I have to do with that. It's uh, a little different, and it's a fun exercise to do. Basically, you, you take a, if you're right-handed, you switch over to your left hand, or if you're left-handed, you switch over to your right hand, and you draw with your non-dominant hand. And uh, it's a way of making you get used to being uncomfortable and also sometimes you do things that you had or your, your hand responds to things that you hadn't seen before and it's always sort of a fun and uh, weird experiment.
enjoy and I always try and spend most of my time looking at the landscape. I only just type, look at paper occasionally. You really want to look, make a mark. Look, make a mark. One more short exercise I to share with you is uh, when you're out in the landscape, your inclination is always to try and put everything on a sheet of paper. And so you want to be able to sort of snap out of that and start to figure out where exactly you're going to study and what exactly you're going to concentrate on. And uh, one short exercise is just to focus on something very small and blow it up. So for now, I'm going to take a small little inlet over there. I'm thinking about light and dark more than uh, line. If you're with charcoal, you can use your fingers to smudge it. So, it's a bit of a jumble, but it helps me. I think I want to kind of pursue that space again for my final drawing. Um, you know, you kind of, when you're doing these short exercises, you have to just get used to like making a mess, raising things, and uh, just, you know, kind of working fast and loose. Okay, so for um, one of my sort of longer drawings, Actually, you could do this as a short exercise too if you want. I'm going to make this longer. I'm going to approach the landscape from a sort of subtractive 
method. I'm going to cover my sheet with charcoal. I'm going to use an eraser backwards and then uh, subtract the lighter areas. And I'll use a charcoal to emphasize the darker area. But first, I'm just going to cover the whole sheet. So this, uh, so this subtractive technique I find very productive because it uh, really forces me to think about light and dark. Um, it forces you to fill the whole sheet of paper, top to bottom, side to side. And uh, it's a very good transitionary technique between drawing and painting because it kind of gets you away from the line and with the lines on the line as a way to represent. Okay, so this is one of my favorite exercises to do outside. It uh, can make you feel a little uncomfortable, but that's always good. Uh, basically what I do is I get uh, some Indian ink, or sumi ink, and uh, I create three dishes. One is pure ink, one is uh, sort of medium, and then one is pretty dilute, even though this looks pretty dark. And then I have one big uh, clear water wash the brushes.
Right, so generally uh, one should uh, work from light to dark and uh, start with the biggest brush first. That way you don't get caught up in the details until towards the end. That's here. Maybe look out here. are of less contrast in the distance than they are in the foreground. And you can see this is true here because of the haze that develops a mile or so out. the bugs when you're out in the landscape. Like I said, it's very like monotonous or very kind of, there's a lot of like grass. You really want to try and choose a, a blade or choose something that you're looking at and make a response to that, even though you're not going to be drawing them all.
think I caught this other place for. I'm okay with it. Um, so I've noticed actually is the tide seems to be going out on the water. Uh, you know, when you're playing, you're playing outside, or drawing outside, you just have to get used to these things and sort of sort of pick pick a pick a moment and then kind of stick with it, and then may have to, may take some imagination to try and. Remember. 